In this video, we're gonna be showing you how to buy Bitcoin on Cash App and then how to take it off the exchange. What's going on guys? All right, so this is gonna be a pretty simple video, but Cash App is probably my new favorite way to buy Bitcoin for a couple of reasons. So we're gonna dive into that, not only how to buy Bitcoin on the actual application, but then how to withdraw it and then hopefully put it onto some kind of cold storage so you don't have to worry about anyone stealing it off the exchanges because that has happened. I get people don't like taking their Bitcoin off the exchanges for a couple of reasons. One of the big reasons may be because it's not as easy to track, but that's when you could download programs like Delta Investment Tracker. This is one of my favorite applications. It's a great way to track all of your investments in one place. And you could see from here, beautiful interface. We got most active trades, our top gainers, top losers for the day. And if you click on your portfolio, it'll break it down, not only stocks, but then also cryptos, any kind of crypto that you have, and then your index funds, and then there's a couple of other cool features in it. But definitely one of my favorite applications to track all of my investments. A link is below for you to check out Delta Investment Tracker, and there's actually a code so you can try out the pro version. But let's dive into the video now. So we're gonna be clicking on Cash App. You can see on my phone screen right here, now what I like about Cash App is they make it very simple to use. It's very easy to buy and withdraw. And unlike certain exchanges like Gemini or Coinbase or BlockFi, you have unlimited withdrawals. So if you wanna buy Bitcoin every single day, maybe $100 worth of Bitcoin every single day, you could withdraw that Bitcoin every single day as well. There's no hard limits. I know Gemini, you can only do, I think it's 10 times a month. 10 withdrawals a month. Coinbase, I'm sure it's something similar before some kind of fees get kicked in. But Cash App just gives you a lot more freedom. And I mean, the interface is beautiful. It's very easy to use. So there's not many buttons here. It's only Bitcoin. So if you wanna buy any other cryptocurrency, you're gonna have to go to a different platform. This is strictly for Bitcoin. But you can see there's a buy button and then the little send button. So we're gonna hit the buy button. And then you can see it gives me a couple options. Uh, if I want to change the order type, which I think is very cool, and then choose whatever limit I want. And then the three dots, I could put in a custom amount. So I'm gonna X out of that. We're gonna click on the change order type. And then you can see we have auto invest or custom purchase order. We click on custom purchase order. This is a limit order. You could control exactly where you want to buy into Bitcoin, which is very cool. It's very important to practice limit orders. I do have a video going over limit orders, but we're not gonna get too involved with that right now. We just wanna know how to buy. So we're gonna hit $100, and then we're gonna hit next. You're gonna have to confirm your PIN. You're also gonna have to hook up your bank account just like you would with Venmo or regular Cash App. I don't feel like I need to go over how to set up Cash App. This is purely how to buy it and then withdraw it from the actual application. But you can see I selected $100. Gives me a brief overview of what we're looking at here, what bank it's coming from, how many sats I'm gonna get, uh, the exchange rate at this time, the symbol, which is obviously BTC, the total purchase, the fees, are a little higher than maybe some exchanges, but we're talking about, I think, a quarter of a percent. So they're all kind of within the same ballpark. So the fees are just kind of a necessary evil that you have to pay for now, but hopefully all of the exchanges will just kind of race down to zero. You're gonna hit confirm. Now all Bitcoin sales are final. Once you buy it, don't think you could return it. You could sell it, but you're not gonna get the exact same amount for it. You may get more or less, depending on how the market does. But there you go, it says you purchased 160,000 sats. I'm gonna hit done, and then it shows up here. Now, if you're a noob, you may wanna keep it on the exchange because you feel nice and comfortable seeing it there. You don't trust yourself, but not your keys, not your coins. There are multiple cases of people losing their actual Bitcoin by keeping it on exchanges. It doesn't matter if it's Coinbase or Mt. Gox or, I mean, any of these exchanges people could steal from, and unfortunately, Cash App is no different. People can steal your Bitcoin by hacking into your phone or a million other ways. So, how do we take it off of the exchange? This is when we wanna send it to a different wallet address. Now, I could go get a hardware wallet and show you how to hook it up to that, but for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna transfer it over to my Moon wallet. So, Moon wallet, M-U-U-N, 
Doesn't matter which wallet it is, this is just to show you how to transfer from an exchange over to a wallet. So you can see, this is the Moon Wallet I'm gonna be bringing it to. Currently have a million sats in it, or $608. We're gonna transfer over that $97 into this. So the first thing we need to do is while I'm in my Moon Wallet, or the wallet you want to transfer it over to, you need to hit the receive button and you wanna create a receive address. Now we got, at least for this, we got Bitcoin and then Lightning. Uh, Cash App is on the base layer, which is the regular Bitcoin layer. So we're gonna be using the address BC1 and then the million letters and numbers afterwards. I'm gonna hit copy. So now I've copied my wallet address that I wanna transfer it to. We're gonna jump back into Cash App and we're going to hit the little send button or the little airplane, whatever you want to call it. And I want to send everything. So 160,610 sets or $97.75. I'm going to hit send. And you can see right at the top, the wallet address is copied in. That BC1 and then the rest is copied in. Do a checksum. Make sure it is the right address. Check maybe the last five or six characters at the end of the address and make sure the first five or six characters are the same at the beginning of the address. Just so you're not sending it to the wrong address because after you send it to the address, that's it. There's no turning back. It's like a wire transfer. There's no way to get it back. It's impossible. So you want to make sure you're sending it to yourself and not someone else. So I'm going to click on that because this is an on-chain transaction. You don't need to leave a note or anything. I'm going to hit next. It's gonna to wanna to confirm your PIN or if you have your fingerprint in it, it makes life easier. Now this is what's really cool. You could set what kind of speed you want. So depending on how quickly you want it, you could do priority, which will be the quickest and it's gonna cost you the most, a 27 cent fee. Rush, which is a little bit slower, 23 cent fee, or free. Now the beauty about Cash App is uh, it could subsidize everyone's transactions and there is a free option that way. It will take a lot longer. I think I did it a couple times. It took like 12 to 13 hours for it to actually go through. And it may have been a little busy in the mempool. So you may want to look out for that. But I'm just going to do priority so it sends over rather quickly. And for the newbies that are watching this that aren't too familiar with fee structures, it's not a percentage. Don't think, oh, 27 cents for... $97, well, what if I want to set $970? Does that mean it's going to be $2.70? No, it's going to be a flat rate of $0.27, cents whether I'm sending $97 or $900,000. That's the beauty of this. But we're going to hit next. An error message is going to pop up saying I have insufficient funds because we need to pay that fee. And the fee is 440 sets. So I'm going to confirm and said, this is just pretty much saying, we're gonna send the amount you want less the fee that you have to pay. So we'll hit confirm. And then right there it said, you initiated the withdrawal. We're gonna hit done. You can see that my account now says zero and it really should only take a couple of seconds to transfer over. Let's jump back over to my moon wallet. It's not there yet. Don't worry if it hasn't showed up yet. We're gonna jump back over to the Cash App wallet where you could kind of track it is if you hit on the little clock, you could see all of uh, my transactions. We got uh, the completed purchase of the uh, 160,000 sats, which is right here under completed. And then you can see the pending uh, withdrawal. So pending just means that it's waiting for its turn to uh, get a confirmation. You need at least one confirmation to show up in the other wallet. And once you have six confirmations, that means it's permanent, it's on the blockchain for the rest of history. But my phone just vibrated, so meanwhile I was talking, it popped up in my Moon Wallet. And there's the notification right there, so if we click on that, we can now see you were paid 160,000 sats. It's confirming, it currently has zero confirmations. So it actually went over with zero confirmations. Uh, as the nodes verify it, then these confirmations will go up until it says six plus. Typically, it will take maybe an hour or two, but at least I know, okay, great, I didn't screw up with my addresses. I now see it in my Moon Wallet. So if we back out, there we go. Now I have the 1 million sats plus the 160,000 sats. And if we jump back to Cash App, you could actually click on that and you could see it has initiated with a little check mark. And you could see right here, blockchain status is pending, but it did initiate. And again, when those confirmations show up, it'll show up on both sides, the Cash App side 
and the whatever wallet you're going into, in this instance, the Moon wallet. Just a few more little things I wanna show you within the settings. You don't have to have it saying sats. Sats is the smallest unit of a Bitcoin. Maybe you actually wanna see it saying Bitcoin instead. And to do that, it's really simple. We're still on the little Bitcoin tab. If you scroll down, uh, you got some news, you got how much you own, currently zero because I withdrew it all, shows your current price. And then right down here, it says display currency. So if we click on that, I could display it in Satoshis or I could display it in Bitcoin. So then when I bought 100, it would say 0.0000167, whatever. So you could choose right there if you wanna see it in Bitcoin or if you wanna see it in Satoshis. So we'll keep it in Satoshis. And then another important thing, if you're someone that has you know more than just a couple hundred bucks, there are Bitcoin limits. So you gotta see here are my limits. So sell unlimited, purchase per week. I can only purchase $100,000 worth of Bitcoin per week. So if you're someone where uh, you wanna purchase more, first off, you are one of the more fortunate ones watching my YouTube channel. And second off, then you may have to use other exchanges as well. But I think $100,000 a week is more than enough for 99% of the people watching this. We got deposits, you know, everything's per week. So it's not like I'm capped at, hey, I could only withdraw 10 times a week. So I could buy as many times as I want a week, but it could only be a maximum of $100,000. And then here's withdrawal. So you have a daily withdrawal limit, similar to how Venmo works and whatnot, uh, $2,000 per day. So I could withdraw $2,000 a day every single day and I won't get any kind of restrictions. I could withdraw three times a day if I'm only withdrawing say 100 bucks or even $500. There's no cap limits, which I really like about that. Again, it's not ideal if you're someone that has a lot of money and you're trying to move a lot of money, but it's great for the person that's trying to dollar cost average into Bitcoin and then putting it onto some kind of cold storage. And then just to finish off the Bitcoin tab, you scroll down, you could do a Bitcoin boost if you have the Cash App card, you get paid back in Bitcoin, and then you scroll to the very bottom, we got my first Bitcoin. Click on learn more, it gives you a little brief history of exactly what Bitcoin is, which, you know, it does an easy job of it explaining it for even a fourth grader to understand it. But guys, that is how you not only buy and withdraw your Bitcoin from Cash App, pretty painless process, a great place to do that, especially if you're not fans of some of the other exchanges out there. But if you like this video, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Drop any comments below. Check out all my other videos. And as always, I will see you guys in the next one.